Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to teach you how to debug your code with PDB. But let's first talk about bugs. What are bugs anyway? Uh, they are mistakes in your code. Mistakes in your code are known as bugs. And you will make mistakes, especially as a beginner. But even as a seasoned professional, I still make mistakes. And so I still need to debug my code. Um, making mistakes is fine. It's a normal part of the learning process, but it's also a normal part of the development process of a new feature. Because you're creating something brand new, you don't necessarily know how to do everything. And so you're going to make simple mistakes. And later on, you'll make more complex mistakes like logic errors that are harder to, harder to debug. But we're going to focus on simple mistakes such as typos or just like silly things and just learn, you know, how to, how to debug your code with PDB. So first, what are you going to learn? We're going to start using PDB in the REPL. We'll start, uh, then we'll learn how to start it on the command line. We'll learn how to step through your code using PDB. We'll um, add breakpoints in PDB. Um, and then we'll create a breakpoint using set trace and the breakpoint function. And then we'll learn how to get help inside of the PDB. Now you might be wondering, why do I keep saying this weird thing, uh, PDB? What the heck is PDB? Uh, it's just a, a short, short name for a module in Python. And the letters PDB stand for Python Debugger. So not Python database, Python Debugger. All right. Well, I find PDB handy. Uh, most Python editors, like uh, PyCharm and Wing IDE or VS Code, they have a lot more features. They include autocomplete, syntax highlighting, a graphical call stack. You can put breakpoints in uh, using your mouse. Uh, you don't get that with PDB. PDB is basically command line only. But, you know, there are times when your IDE isn't available. Um, some IDEs work really good uh, on remote servers. Some do not. Some IDEs work really well with Docker, and some do not. Um, in those cases, you may need to use PDB, and it can be a real lifesaver if you know how to use it. So let's get started uh, using PDB in the REPL. First, though, we need to create some code so that we can actually do some debugging. So I'm going to have this code. I'm just going to call it debugcode.py. It's going to have, do some logging, and we're going to loop over um, a range. In this case, I'm going to pass it a 5. So we're going to loop over a fi loop 5 times, and we're going to log uh, the number 5 times, and then like add 2 to the number each time. That gives us something to look at with our debugger. There's like no mistakes in here right now. And in, in fact, we really don't care about mistakes. We just want to learn how to use the debugger to go through this code. So let's go ahead and run um, PDB in our REPL. I think that would be helpful if we can do that. Okay, so the first step in using the REPL is to actually open one up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, we'll open up a new terminal. And we'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. And then I think what we're going to do is we're just going to learn how to how to just use this in the REPL. So we can just type Python here and get Python 3.10 running. And we'll import our code. I think we called it debug code. Okay, so that looks right. And then we can import PDB in our REPL. And then we can do pdb.run. And note that we're going to use a string here for debug code dot looper. And as you might recall, um, the looper is the function inside of debug code, which is our module name. So debug code is the module name, looper is the function name. We're going to call it. And now we can see that we're in the PDB debugger. You can see that because PDB is now, uh, now at the beginning instead of the triple um, greater than sign. So now we're in the debugger, and we can say continue, and it's going to run through the code. Now we could have said step here, and it would have stepped through each line in the code. But if you just type continue or C, it's going to run through the entire code. So if I hit uh, run again, I jump back into the code, and we're back where we want to be. 
but there's like no, there's not, you know, there's no like exceptions right now. So if I type C or continue, it runs through the rest of it. Um, if we had raised an exception or we got into a breakpoint, it would have stopped at the exception and we could have done some debugging there. But in this case, there just weren't any exceptions or breakpoints set. So the code worked perfectly and finished executing. All right. Now let's start PDB from the command line. So let's exit out of the, the REPL. And we'll just clear this up. And then we just need to run um, PDB on the command line. So if you do that, you can do Python dash M PDB. And the dash M just says to Python, um, hey, I'm going to run a module on the command line, basically. So dash M says, we're going to run PDB directly. And then we can just say debug code. All right, dot pi. And we hit enter, and boom, we are in business. We're already in the debugger. So when you run this it this way, you can already see that uh, the syntax is a little it looks a little bit different. Now we have kind of an arrow that tells us where we are in the program. We're starting out at def log number. Um, again, if you type C or continue in its entirety, it's going to run through the whole thing. But this time it restarted. Um, the debugger finished running through all of your code and then it started again right from the beginning. So this is handy if you want to run your code multiple times. Um, if you don't want to uh, keep running this code, code over and over again, you can type exit at any time to exit the debugger. Okay. What if we need to step through the code? That's always kind of fun. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and learn how to do that next. Let's clear this up. And then we'll run the PDB again. And this time we're going to learn about stepping. So the word step is a way to step through your code line by line. So if we hit step, it's going to go to looper. So let's go, let's open up our debug code so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right. So right now, um, let's drag this out. And we'll just drag this one over here. And switch. There we go. So you can see when I did step, we went from log back to looper. Um, we can type step or you can type s for short and it'll just kind of step through it. Now we're back in the name main. If you hit s again, we're in looper. And we can just keep stepping through it over and over again and just see what everything looks like, which is, which is really handy for like stepping through your code and figuring out you know, what's going on. As you step through it though, um, you can like print out different things. So like right now I have access to number. So I can find out what number is. Right now it's zero, so that's not very interesting. So we can go ahead and step some more and we can see that it's gonna print out processing zero. And we could do, we could find out what number plus two is here if we wanted to. That's going to be two. So if we step again, we can see adding two to number equals two, etc. You can just kind of play with that and just see what you want to do. Um, the other command I want to mention in this clay case would be uh, jump. You can use the command to jump to a specific line number in your code by typing jump followed by a space and then the line number that you want to go to. So if I wanted to do that, you know, I could say just jump to 10, but it's not going to not going to work because we're like in an event. I think we're, because we're stepping. So let's um, let's exit and we'll clear and let's see if I can make it work by just saying jump to 10. There we go. So jumping works at the very beginning of the PDB, but if you're already stepping through it, jump probably isn't going to work the way you expect it to. All right, let's close that. And let's talk about adding breakpoints in PDB. Um, to add a breakpoint to the last line of the looper function, um, we're going to have to learn what to do. So I'm going to teach you exactly what to do here. Let's see, did I put that over here? Here we go. So to set a breakpoint in the PDB debugger, you can use the, word, the keyword break or B command followed by the line number that you want to break on. 
So let's go ahead and do that next. Shouldn't have closed that terminal. All right, so we got a terminal back. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll do Python dash M. Um, I think we want to do PDB debug code.py. And now we can add our breakpoint. So let's say we want to do break 10. Okay, so now it says breakpoint one is at debug code colon 10, which means line 10. So now if we do continue, it'll jump down to line 10, which is um, down here on log i. I don't think this, oh yeah, it does, good. So here you can see line 10 is log i. So we just jumped all the way down there. And that's, that's just a really easy way to add a breakpoint where we think there's gonna be a problem in our code, or we know by looking at the traceback that we're gonna have a problem on line 11. So we put a breakpoint on line 10 so we can start there and check and see, you know, what is I? Is it something weird? Is it none? Is it like a string? Then we don't want a string there? That sort of thing. So that's just like a quick and dirty way to, to debug that. All right, let's learn um, how to set a breakpoint with set trace. So to do that, we modify our debug code, and I'm just going to rename it debug code with set trace.py. And we'll put um, the debug, uh, the breakpoint in by doing set trace. So to do that, uh, it's very common to say import pdb semicolon pdb.setTrace. Um, I'm going to show you a way that's newer and better than this. But for a long time, this was the way to add a breakpoint using pdb in your code. So let's go ahead and try to run this code and just see, you know, what happens. So let's go back over here and we'll exit out of this and we'll clear it. And then we'll just say Python and renamed that code. I think we named it debug code um, with set trace. So let's do that. Debug code with set trace. All right. Now when we hit enter, because we have that set trace in there, it's going to stop and drop us into the debugger. And then we can debug as normal. All right, so I've already showed you how this works. We'll just go ahead and exit. It didn't like me exiting that, that time. I'm not entirely sure why. But that's okay. Sometimes you'll see an, see an error when you just exit out of it. And it doesn't really mean anything. It just means that the debugger is unhappy about something. It's not something to do with your code just the way the debugger is sometimes. All right, so let's add the break built-in breakpoint function. So breakpoint was added in Python 3.7, and that simplifies uh, your code quite a bit because now this is actually part of Python, and you can replace the set trace or the import PDB set trace command with just saying breakpoint, and it does the exact same thing as what you saw before, which means that if we clear this and run this code with our, we call it breakpoint, I believe. It's going to do the exact same thing. It's still going to drop us into the debugger at the exact same place. And we can still get access to I and do all of our stepping and everything else because we jumped into the code using um, the breakpoint command or function. All right. Another benefit of using breakpoint is that many Python ADEs or recognize that function and automatically pause execution. So they'll actually, it'll actually cause uh, like PyCharm or VS Code to stop and run the debugger that is in PyCharm or VS Code instead of PDB. That is super nice. This is not the case if you are using the older set trace method. It only works with breakpoint. All right, so let's learn how to get help inside of PDB. Uh, when you're inside a PDB, you can just type the word help. So let's do that over here. We can say help. It tells us what's what's what. Um, we could ask it for help on something specific, like like where. Like I don't know how to use where. So let's say I don't know what where does. You can type help where. Where prints a stack trace with the most current frame at the bottom. So we could t we could try that here and see what happens. Um, it's not really a stack trace so much as uh, it just kind of tells us where we're at in the code so far. 
uh, you know, if we had like um, an error, it might give us more information. Uh, we could also say help Q. What does that do? Well, it quits the debugger. Let's try it out. So now we quit the debugger and we get that little bit of an error, but it's all good. All right, we've reached the end of this, but like I said, if you need any help on any of these commands, just try it out in the PDB. It'll tell you what they are and you can figure out how to use them. Otherwise, um, let's talk about what we learned today. Uh, we learned how to start the PDB uh, using the REPL. And then we learned how to do uh, importing or running PDB uh, as a module on the command line. Next, we stepped through our code. We had added breakpoints uh, using PDB, set trace, and the breakpoint function. And finally, we learned how to get help. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or drop me an email if you'd like. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you next time.